when you think about psychiatric disease, about 20% of the cases are going to really have a neurologic basis or a medicine basis. So it's one organ. It's the brain. Yeah. I'm Dr. Charlie Marmer, the chair of the Department of Psychiatry at NYU Grossman School of Medicine and Langone Health, and it's my great pleasure to be co-hosting today's podcast with Dr. Stephen Galletta, our eminent chairman of the Department of Neurology. And Steve? It's wonderful to be here with you, Charlie. And we're here for two reasons, because we're interested in having a discussion about how psychiatry and neurology uh, are collaborating in a very deep way for the understanding of neuropsychiatric illness. But we're also here for what I would call a meta message, to signal that the future really is a deep partnership of neurology and psychiatry. Steve, you were, you were telling me just before we started our podcast this afternoon that you had just come out of a very interesting case conference. And uh, tell us a little bit about that and who was there and which program that highlights that is perhaps one of the unique strengths of, of NYU. Yeah, so this morning, you know, on my schedule was the MS conference, multiple sclerosis conference. And so I logged on and in the room uh, were the MS fellow candidates. They were interviewing for MS fellowship and they were going to present an interesting case. And they highlighted that they had uh, three neuropsychiatrists uh, who uh, all had trained in this program, Dr. John Howard, Dr. Eric Charlson, and Dr. Ben Fuchs, and that they were going to have Dr. Ben Fuchs discuss this case. And as the case uh, comes about, it's a 50-year-old man who presented with altered mental status and uh, unusual postures. And... uh, there was a lesion on MRI in the hypothalamic area that looked inflammatory. And so they, the teams uh, consulted uh, Dr. Fuchs because of this person's unusual motor uh, behavior. And, and Dr. Fuchs um, discovered that he had catatonia. And, and he went over all the manifestations of catatonia and including echopraxia, where the, the patient would, you know, copy what he, you know, did with his hands. So if he if he made a circle with his hands, the patient would make a circle with his hands. And and he talked about, you know, waxy flexibility of how the patient first might have resistance when they moved the arm, but as they, re, you know, moved the arm repetitively, it, it gave way. And, and to the important circuitry uh, in the brain that disconnects the motor areas from the basal ganglia and, and prefrontal cortex. Uh, but importantly, uh, that the patient was treatable. It was uh, fascinating that we had three neuropsychiatrists in the room, and they just bring a different perspective Wonderful. about the case. Amazing. So, so to summarize, it was an example of a case where we had three specialists, what you call, mentioned neuropsychiatrists, they're actually, I think, all graduates of our program in which they complete a neurology residency and a full psychiatry residency. I think it's a six-year program. And they are boarded, el- become eligible to become boarded as psychiatrists and as neurologists. And when they examine a patient, they don't see it separately as a neurologist might or a psychiatrist, they see it in an integrative way. It's it's a brain disease that needs to be understood from both perspectives. And in the case of this interesting patient with multiple sclerosis, one of the lesions was in an area that produced a symptom typically associated with psychiatric illness, catatonia, and yet this was the product of an unusual probably part of the MS disease in some complex way. These uh, jointly trained doctors uh, think differently and have, you know, a vast expertise, and I admire them enormously for both their 
psychiatric knowledge as well as the neurologic knowledge. Let's take an example on the other side. Uh, well, first, a historical footnote. A hundred years ago or more, the commonest cause for admission to state mental hospitals, mental hospitals in America was neurosyphilis. At the time, it wasn't understood that it was an infectious disease caused by the spirochete. As soon as that was understood, of course, neurosyphilis moved, was treat, became treatable at a certain point and moved out of the psychiatry realm into the realm of uh, infectious disease treatment. So in the past, what we called psychiatric could have been medical and neurological, and in the present, what you call what we call neurological MS can present psychiatric. Now, let's take schizophrenia. Don Goff, Dr. Don Goff, is our leader of our schizophrenia program and research at NYU. He's an eminent uh, schizophrenia researcher. Don now believes, working with Caitlin Amani, another graduate of our double board program, that up to forty percent of patients with schizophrenia may have autoimmune encephalitis. Tell us about that. What are your thoughts? Yeah. What, what is autoimmune encephalitis, and is that a neurological or psychiatric problem? Probably both, right? Because uh, I was very fortunate at, at that point in my career that I worked with Giuseppe Damiu, who ultimately, with Dave Lynch, discovered NMDA encephalitis. And I actually uh, saw the first patient uh, that they, they made that uh, diagnosis. And, uh, and, and, and that patient uh, presented with uh, initially a, uh, a behavioral uh, abnormality, uh, really very difficult to control, visual hallucinations. And so that, you know, was why I saw her. And she was uh, very sick because she was in the in intensive care unit because in the later stages of this NMDA encephalitis, with uh, they put together, uh, eventually uh, causes respiratory failure, medullary uh, failure. And uh what what they they did initially we would see all these psychiatric patients and i saw some of them and we would you know we really wouldn't know what they had they would be on the psychiatry floor the locked floor uh, of psychiatry and we would do a spinal tap and we would find a mild pleocytosis in the csf but we didn't really didn't understand it so what they found initially was that when they stained the serum of these earlier patients before the patient they fetched, is that they, it bound to the synapse. And so they knew now that these antibodies were binding to the synaptic connections, unlike the original perineoplastic antibodies, which were binding to targets in the cytoplasm. And that led them one thing to another. They now found that the serum of this patient was binding to circuitry in the hippocampus. And through you know you know science and uh, other thought leaders, they put it together was the NMDA receptor was amazing. Yeah. So in essence, a significant proportion of patients who present with psychotic symptoms, one would ordinarily think psychiatric disorders, are having an immune disorder in which the body's own antibodies are attacking receptors for neurons in the brain and causing an autoimmune inflammatory process. But by the way, there's great interest, as you know, Steve, also in a uh, sort of an immune form of treatment-resistant depression as well, in which all treatments fail but, but treatments with agents which reduce inflammatory reactions in the brain may be very helpful. So we have it in psychosis, we have it in mood disorders, and maybe other disorders. So it's extremely interesting. I, I think it's, it's an important uh, future area as we develop new tracers for PET scanning and new imaging techniques that we are able to better image the brain and the underlying inflammation that may exist in some of these patients. In the future, neurology and psychiatry will actually co-manage and do research together, 
provide innovative treatments to brother, and the terrible burden of neurological disease and psychiatric disease, which has disabled so many people and caused enormous suffering, can be alleviated in this new partnership, which we're very excited about. So I'm just delighted on a personal level and as also a leader in the field to be able to share a vision with you for the future. I'm incredibly grateful to you, and I consider us as one team um, in helping patients who are afflicted with a variety of disorders that are neuropsychiatric and beyond.